Yeah, she needs permission to record. This is the story of a fisherman, Nong Jose. Armed with his bugsai and fishing net, he sets out to sea every day with the hope of getting a good harvest. Day in and day out, he paddles, tireless and hopeful. His family depends on him to put food on the table enough to last them for the day. The next day, 
Non Jose hopes and dreams of a bright future for his family. Non Jose has fears as he journeys into the sea, for the future brings about uncertainties. So goes Non Jose, tirelessly paddling to achieve his dreams and realize his hopes for himself and his family. As the bullseye meets the waves, he thrusts himself fearlessly forward. In his journey through life, he knows he is not alone. Kindness exists in this world. evident in the many happy faces of people around him. Today is a beautiful day. Tomorrow, even better. The future looks bright. God Almighty, thank you for bringing us together during this unprecedented and challenging time. We ask that as we move forward as a community into the next normal, you give us the strength, patience, and wisdom needed to overcome these trials and rise above the pandemic. We pray for our present-day heroes who are on the front lines fighting against the virus, those who have become sick, and those who have died May they have eternal rest. For those of us who are holding on to hope, please give us the grace to never give up. Dearest God, heal our land. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the third episode of Rafi's Restart webinar series which aims to provide practical information for all of us to help our community not only survive, but thrive in the next normal. We hope to create an online community where users can engage directly with our resource speakers by asking questions and interacting online. We'll be having a question and answer portion later on in the episode. So let me start off by introducing myself. My name is Jackie Clavin, and I work for the Ramona Boites Foundation, also known as Rafi. Uh, the Restart webinar is actually a series, and for the month of July, we've been discussing various topics related to health and moving forward in the next normal. So this webinar series is in line with Rafi's vision of touching people, shaping the future. We want to empower our community by um, connecting uh, users virtually with the experts. And so we can learn how to better manage the disease because if we better understand COVID, we'll be able to move forward more confidently into the next normal. So our episode today is entitled, What to Expect When You're Expecting and Beyond. Um, this will help uh, expecting moms and dads learn how to best navigate prenatal checkups and delivery during COVID. Uh, it will also help parents learn how we can best take care of our young children when we find ourselves um, in situations like lockdown or um, you know, just the overall pandemic of COVID. So we are using the Zoom app as a platform for our streaming today. Uh, and we are streaming live via Facebook. So I wanted to start off for those of us that are watching on Zoom. 
uh, to familiarize ourselves with the Zoom buttons and functions. So first, um, please keep your microphone on mute the entire time. This is to uh, ensure that our speakers do not get interrupted or distracted. Um, next, be sure to keep your video off as well so that we do not disrupt the session. And um, if you have any questions, you can do so by asking in the chat feature, which is just at the bottom of the screen. You can go ahead and chat at the bottom or provide um, virtual uh, support via the reactions, which is a thumbs up or a clap. You know? So you can go ahead and do that to our speakers so they feel a little bit more comfortable while they're giving their presentation. Okay, and so if you are watching on Facebook, uh, you will also be able to ask your questions through the comment section. We have a team that will be able to go through those. So to summarize, please keep your microphone on mute during the entire webinar. Um, please also keep your camera off. And to use the reaction buttons on Zoom chat box or the Facebook comment section, if you have any questions or would like to um, give a comment to our speakers, uh, you may definitely do so. We really encourage that. So we would also like to thank our official media partner, Cebu Daily News, for helping us to promote this series. As Cebu's only independent digital news portal, you can follow the latest local news stories on their Facebook page. We are also excited to announce that we will be giving away load prizes later on today uh, in our episode, but you have to stay tuned. No, you have to uh, continue watching to know what, um, what the challenge will be. So, um, but to start off, we want to uh, announce that we have prizes for the people that registered ahead of time using um, the link that was on our Facebook. So um, for the first five registrants or episode three, which were Jennifer Irene Buchan, uh, Flor de Lesa Fuertes, Claire Pallier, April May Francis Garcia, and Leslie and you. Thank you so much for being the first five to register. Uh, we hope that you are excited and that you're here with us watching today. Um, we will be in contact with you later on on how you can avail of your 100 pesos load prize. So remember, we still have more prizes to come for all of our viewers watching. So be sure to stay tuned um, for the rest of the webinar to join in on that so you too can win. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce both of our speakers that are here with us today and say thank you so much. Um, for their willingness to share their time and their expertise. You know, they're both doctors and we know that doctors are, are very busy during this uh, time. Uh, no, so our first is Dr. Mary Gurley Veloso. She is an ob gyne. Hello, Dr. Veloso. Thank you for joining us today. Um, our second speaker is also is Dr. Marini Esguera. She is a pediatrician, a lactation consultant, as well as the founder of Tita Doc Mom, which is a Facebook group which uh, provides practical advice for parents taking care of infants and young children. So thank you both doc doctoras for joining us here today. We are so excited uh, to gain your insight on this. Now this is uh, primarily targeted towards expecting moms and moms of young young children, no, maybe three and, and below that are breastfeeding. So um, we're so happy to have you here today. You want to say hi to the, the audience, Doc? Okay, so hello. We'll be, hello, hello, good, good afternoon, afternoon, Doc Iskara. Thank you so much for joining us. And we also have Doc Veloso here. Hello, hello. both of these doctors are very well established and well practiced in their respective fields and also very beautiful. No? Uh, so thank you again. Thank you for joining us. We'll be starting with Dr. Veloso, um, who is an ob gynae and she, her presentation will focus um, on, on how expecting moms, you know, how do they, how do they adjust in terms of prenatal care or um, in terms of the delivery during this time of COVID? Because we know that um, the hospitals are a little bit busy right now with all of the COVID cases. So how do expecting moms go about uh, this. So we'll just go get directly into it. Dr. Veloso, if you're ready for your presentation, I will turn over the webinar to you now. My hapon kanin tanan. All right. So we can start the presentation? Yes, thank you. So, ganun panahon na no had look kidan tanan. I'll just speak in Bisaya English ato lang ato lang i-combine. Of course, ang imo hang safety, mo gyud atong top priority. So, magdepende ni siya 
kung unsa nakadako ni mong pregnancy, unsa nakadako ng tiyan, pila na ka-weeks, o kung doon na ba kay comorbidities like hypertension, diabetes, o ubang sakit. So sa una, next slide please, sa una, ang ato, okay, to go back, ang recommendations karon number one, prevent the spread of uh, COVID, mo na itong number, priori number one priority. Of course, kung dili ra siya urgent, kung elective mang gani, atong ipospone. Kaya importante nga magpuyo sa tasabalay. Ikatulo, any visit that can be done by telehealth should be done that way. No support person to accompany the patient to outpatient visits unless nga integral part sila of patient care. Next. So, mo yung kinaraan, ang traditional... Uh, so, sorry sa wrong spelling. Traditional schedule of prenatal. Sa una, before seven months, monthly ta, kay numdo mo, every month. And then, ikaw man sa, ikaw man sa seven months, na every two weeks na dayon ta, until the 36 weeks. Ikaw man na, na weekly na dayon. Apan tungod ka nilaging atong sitwasyon karon sa pandemya, atong gi change na. As I said, kung dili raman sa kinahanglan, actually kinahanglan, but kung madala sa telehealth, Inaagi sa phone call, sa messenger, kung doon na mo FB messenger, or pwede sa chat, or you can even use Viber. Or most doctors now, um, they also have platforms. Even our government, like Soto, Talisay District, Subumed, we have telehealth to cater to all people. Now, also, with telehealth, ikumbine na mo with clinic visits. Kay dili man sa, at, all, at all times, madara sa telepono. We also need to see you. So, kinahangla na mo ng schedule. Of course, kaning telehealth, clinic visit mo, depende na kung doon na ba sa inyong lugar o wa. Kaya what yan? In case wala tayo internet, kung saan man nato pag messenger, di ba? Pero masyaka, dagan kayong maka-Facebook. Alright. Next slide, please. So, kami siya mo ni ang proposed. Dili, pa, dili, kids, pan, um, dili pasabot nga kanigid yung mong sundon tanan. Kasi as I said, mo depende ni sa availability o sa resources. Example, so wala pa'y three months, pwede rag manawag lang sa ka. Manawag ka sa imuhang doctor or sa FB page, mangutana na sila sa imong history. Igabot ang three months, importante nga ma mag-clinic visit mo sa inyong doctor. You can also have an ultrasound by this time and laboratories. Now, kung kabantay ka, from 13 to 20, supposedly after four months, four weeks, magpa-check up ka. But if you notice, lagyo na siya, 20, 28, 32, 34. Because in between, you can really do telehealth. No? Apan, kung hapit na ka mga anak, importante na weekly na until panganakay. So, of course, kung mag-clinic visit ganit ka or muad to ka sa inyong barangay health center, ayaw kalimot mag-mask. Mag-mask, mag-physical distancing yun mo, dili sa ta mag-chisme sa atong kuyog, o Mag-andam ta sa atong laboratory daan. Mag-andam ta sa atong questions daan. One week postpartum, pwede mo mag-clinic visit or kung di gid madal, pwede sa jud mo mag-teleconference. Next slide, please. So, again, teleconsult. So, unsa man ni? Meaning, ani, um, as I said, sa FB pages or even Viber, kung na-viber inyo hang mga doctors or inyong healthcare providers sa atong mga birthing, sa atong lying in, na na sila like sa Minglanilla, like sa Glory Reborn, ani sila. You will be asked to monitor your blood pressure, ang imong blood pressure, imong i-check, ang inyong timbang, o ang lihok sa bata. Apan, kung wala ka aning gadgets, kung aragi problema, relax lang. Pwede ragi natin ibuhaton sa clinic visit. Fetal kicks. Kaning fetal kicks, dili pasabot nga makita ni mo dayo ni or ma-check ni mo dayo ni. Usually at 5 to 6 months, diha na ni mo mahik ma-notice nga mukik si baby. So, imo na siyang bantayan. Usually, ani no, ini ka humagkaon. After meals, dayong katog, especially kadlaon. Lihok ang bata nga makamata ka. Now, during the teleconsult, report any danger signs such as labad kayong ulo, kasukaon, sigig suka-suka, taas ang blood pressure, taas ang blood pressure, labad imong ulo, sakit imong tangkugo, sakit imong kutok-kutok. Hanap ang pananaw, that is really scary. Vaginal spotting, nagdugo ka. Or nagawasan kag tubig, na tubig na nang gawas. Frequent, nagsikig sakit imong tiyan, na di ka mawa, bisag bupahuay ka. Or hinay mulihok ang baby. You can report all these things sa teleconsult. But, kung, kung, kung siya persistent na ganit ni, ayaw mo o hesitate 
adto sa emergency room. Ang question ninyo, I know later I'll talk to you about that. Now, let's do laboratory and imaging request on teleconsult. And through the teleconsult, we can also give you prescriptions at the end of the consult. Next slide, please. Example, nangayo jug ko o permission sa mga pasyente. Hi, doc. Hello. So, ni smile ni sila o ng lipstick sila sa daan. Kibaw sila mo gawa sila diri. Next slide, please. Okay, let's go now to the clinic visit. Manata nag teleconsult. Ling no na to. Oh, five months na ko, doc. May gondays doktora or may gondays si ang midwife. Oh, mawari na ka diri ha. Dadaan na ang imuhang mga laboratory. Mag-examine na ta. Before you go, magpahibaw. The Republic Act Number Eleven Thirty Three Two, the mandatory reporting of notifiable disease and health events of public concern act. Palihug, maugud ni ang among ampo ninyo. Please, please tell the truth. Not because amo kang i ano ano, but we can help you. Example, do na kaani ng symptoms. You need some support. You need us also para ma manage na mo whatever you're feeling and. Before sa mahimong mugrabe, we can refer you right away. If do na kay cough, colds, fever, lisod ang ginhawa, sore throat, diarrhea, loss of appetite, kasukaon, nagsukasuka, eye discharge, decrease or loss of smell and taste. Kani sila. Kaning mga symptoms, I know it is very varied. It doesn't mean nga. It's true. It doesn't mean COVID right away. But tell us. Arun maka Aron maka diagnose me or we do some tests or maka monitor. That's the real thing. We monitor you. We will not leave you alone. Ikaduha para tinha lang ka sa balay sa. We'll monitor and then let's see kung mahimo niya ng moderate severe. And those coming in, aron wala sa tay, wala sa tay makatagod, di ba? So it's important to tell the truth. Okay, if you have history of travel, kung gikan ka sa laing lugar, magsulti sa ka. Exposure to suspect, probable, or confirmed cases of COVID-19. Because we can also advise you. May yung ka. Number one, you the dog na abayay na kwan sa mong silingan. All right. May yung dami. Okay. You isolate yourself. mga ten to ten days, no? Before kamo ato or kanang kung na expose mangani ka. Isolate niya. Wakay symptoms. Isolate yourself. Okay na mo insulti. Di gini mo ingon nga. Ah, ato din sa hospital. We don't say that. That's why it's important for you to tell us what you feel. Okay. Next slide, please. The clinic visit, okay. Mo na di siya ang actual. Wa ko nagpakita sa kung naman kaya wa ko gamit makeup po. Nai usu makeup run. Appointment basis consultation. Please come earlier than your scheduled time. Sempre. And we promise you. Kay bao ko mo ingon juga dok dok. Kay mo mga bot dok. I know. Ah, gamay lang sang pasin siya. Bisag five minutes lang kamo sa yu sa yu. Kay we really really try to be on time unless nga anagyuy emergency. I know nagay mo commit na bida bida. The accompanying person may stay outside the clinic or wait in the car, like my patient here. Na ang iyang husband, ang iyang partner na asa pikas. One time na asa tuig sa patient waiting in the car. Okay, raman sa kaya dali raman. Ang among clinic visit is only about fifteen minutes. We cannot stay longer, okay? Because we want to practice physical distancing, lesser exposure, and if you notice, the door is open because we want air to. To to circulate, no. Dili siya magtipun o gang hangin. In fact, the ang on the other side there's a window there that's open also. Now wear a face mask. Kung mahimu gani, honestly, kung cloth mask imong gamit, dubli ha. Kaya ang cloth mask medyo nipis na siya. Or get a face shield. Like her, she's she's using one. Kung naka face shield ka or mask, do not touch your face and mask. No, kay Mora mang gihapon, nipilit din ha ang virus, yung mong gunitan, yung mga atol din ta. Diba? So, mora gihapon. Bisan pagkatul na kayo na yung ilong, magnaan na ka. <laughs> Joke. The clinic visit is limited to 15 minutes, as I said, para lesser ang atong exposure. Next slide, please. So, karon, padung na hapit na dyan ka mga anak, sigo, ingno na lang natong mga 36, 37, that's about 3 to 4 weeks before ka mga anak. Do not forget, or, If makalimot kay kalimtanon sa din doktor usahay, ask your healthcare provider ahead of the hospital protocols of which he or she is affiliated. Kay sa laing-laing hospital, dep depende ma, we have a a protocol, but 
depende sa resources, meaning sa ilang mga labs o sa ilang mga testing, mag-vary good ang protocol. And that's why you need to find out kung saan para ready ka. In fact, before the pandemic, we tell our patients, you can visit the hospital and see asa kado asa kapadung ang emergency room asa ang room but this time dili naman taka ingon anak ay ma-expose man ta so you ask kung unsay mga guidelines or protocol ang ay buhaton this is important at 30 to 7 37 to 38 weeks that's about 2 to 3 weeks before ka mga anak pismid um pogs and doh later i'll tell you about that but kami sa pogs the philippine obgyn society ang amo is, we do a swab for RT-PCR at, at 37 to 38 weeks. Nga naman, gusto mi andam na mudaan. Andam tang tanan, nga dili ka masagol. That is our top priority. Remember, your safety is our top priority. The COVID-19 test and screening will depend on the existing protocols and resources of the hospitals, institutions, and birthing centers. So, hapit na yun ang day. Prepare your bag with the essentials. Ang imong mga sinina, ang lampit sa bata, everything. Ayaw kalimti imong ID, ang imong PhilHealth card, kung doon na ka, PHIC, or ang UMID card na lang, kaya universal na mangyid na. And some important documents, apiliin niyong marriage certificate, whatever certificate na panadiha. Ako no, I would advise, better get to have a list of the hospital contact numbers. Kaya nga no, I remember kind of you, sige tag nga, pirming puno, pirming puno. It would be better if makatawag na tadaan o kay baw na ta asa tapadong nga dili puno or nai available, right? So, kana. Next slide, please. Now, nabot na gid ang alaw, labor na ka. Sakit na yung tiyan. Ang imong contractions every three minutes, sakit na ka ayod. Bisa kung saan yung maghigda di ha, digin mawa ang sakit. Now, um, nagawasan ba kag tubig? Nagausan ba kagdugo? O ang sakit, dili na mawala. No? You call your healthcare provider, mag-andam naman ta. And as much as possible, check the hospital of choice to inquire in availability. All patients are received at the ER triage. Ano siya pasabutan? Sa una manggod, naratay admitting orders. Pwede ka modritsyo sa room. But now, importante nga mo adto ka sa ER triage nga naman kay aduna tay mga test lang like if wala kay RT PCR the hospital or the institution may um, ask for a rapid test if you want to know about rapid test I'll tell you later so rapid test or ubang laboratories depende sa kung duna kay symptoms what additional orders we have to take ang question na if wala kay PCR daan COVID-19 test screening and management are carried out at the ER triage. Only one accompanying or support person per patient is allowed. Usara ha, sa una kay apil pa ang mama, ang papa, ang bana, ang igsuon, usalang sa. Okay? Patient and healthcare workers wear the appropriate protective gear. Kung makabantay ka, daghan kayong astronaut ron sa ER. O ka nang murag yung isda, nga dagko kayo o respirator. Ay maghadlok, Anna. No, it's better that they wear that. Aron, walay tinaktanay. Next slide, please. Okay, I made this slide according to what I saw or I made interviews. But this is just a rough view. Okay, it doesn't mean nga everybody does this. Pero sa most hospitals, maoni ang nahitabo. Sa karon, ha? Sa karon. A patient goes to active labor. You are seen at the ER triage. If do na kay, look on the left. This is very important and this is what we want. If you are, have a known swab PCR result that is taken one to two weeks before and it's a negative, you wait a little while in the ER triage before ka transfer. I admit ka and you go to the regular labor room and delivery room ward. If positive ka, Mona Niron, remember I told you, call your healthcare provider. Inform everybody. Inform your barangay. See? Inform your barangay. And then they will call the ambulance. Ready na ang tanan. They will even call the hospital asa kapadong. Everybody's ready. And you know, we, you need more care and attention kung mapositive ka. Now, mon yung problema if unknown. But dili yun ta makabasol nga naman. 
ang resources ni Hit Giyod. Tinuod gid na. Ni Hit ang resources sa pagkakaroon sa atong swabbing. We can't wa gyud daghan ra kay ta. Pero ay mo gabla ka kay naatay good news ana duha ka buok later on I'll tell you. So most of these hospitals kun tahay ingon na to lying in or sa ato even sa atong RHU, syempre no they they prioritize the symptomatic. So they now go by symptoms asa ka nagpuyo or do na ba kay contact with suspect or confirmed. Covid tests are carried out. Kung wala ka ani nga history, chances are kung doon na sila transition LR or DR dito ka ibutang. Or kung wala sila transition, they only have infectious and non-infectious. Chances are dito ka sa non-infectious kung wakaani. While awaiting for results. Meaning, um, they are now institution doing swabs for all who come in. Right? But the swab will come in two to three days. Remember that. With history, kung doon na kaani nga history, right away, i-admit ka sa infectious LRDR ward. Aron, matagaan ka sa saktong tambal o mamonitor ka o tarong. Apan, kumugawas na giyod ang bata. Imminent delivery, kausan na lang mo itong. Mm! So, mas maayo nga naatangad to sa infection. Kaya wak ta kibaw. Usahay gani, mangutana pa lang tag ma'am, giubusip on ka. Ah, digawas na ang bata. So, wala na tayo mahimo. Paspas, baya kayo. Next slide, please. No, this is the good news one. DOH issues guidelines on the expanded COVID-19 testing. It has updated its interim guidelines on expanded risk-based testing on COVID-19 cases. Department Memorandum 2020-0285, butang yun na to sa tong alam patakan, was adopted in view of the increased RT-PCR testing capacity of the country. You are called subgroup F, pregnant patients who shall be tested during the peripartum period. You see? Meaning, kita ang mga pregnant. Angay na ta magpa-test. Aron, katong akong gitanaw ni mga algorithm, katong the left side, that is what we aim for. Right? Subgroup F. Next slide, please. There you see. These are the, the institutions, the hospital where you can get PCR. There's Chongwa, Perpetual, UC Med, Red Cross, ARC, Maayan, Prime Care. Look at that one in the middle, the Bayanihan DOH Swabbing Center IEC. Picture ninyo karun da yun, arun makapaset mug appointment. Sige, picture sa. Alright, did you? Alright, next slide. Now, the second good news and the new news, this was like um, two days ago, on Friday, July 24. Soto will have a drive-through and walk-through swabbing for RT-PCR for SARS-CoV. You can register online. I know it the line has been crashing because a lot of people are calling. But please, please, please be patient. Remember, you have one to two weeks before ka nga mavalid ang imong PCR. Okay? The good news, it's also free. Please avail of this. Now, mingon ka, hala dok, di ko maan to kay mag-ubid ko. Ay, maubid tau. You wear your mask. Ayaw pakig-chismis ay mong kuyog. Ayaw mong paduol. You, you wear a uh, use your kuan use your alcohol or wash hands na ay sa mo pag istorya istorya di sa ta magchismisa nad magpakuha mo kita kita wag siya walk through drive through para dili mo magtapok it's by appointment right next okay you can take a pictures of the picture of this these are the hospitals sa ako lang ning nakalap ha syempre usa ra magkukataw di nako magkalap ang tanan there's the numbers and the fb page so you see the hospitals with teleconsult some hospitals are accepting new patients while others are just sticking unta sa ilahang maternity package. Nga naman, um, ang ilahang sang manpower, di masaging na ang taon kadaghan. So ila sa nang ipang prioritize. Next slide. There. So here in Cebu, you have these numbers and the FB pages. Take a picture kung ganahan mo. All right. Next. There. If you want this picture, sige, picture lang sa ninyo, or I think Rafi can give this to you. Oh, see, see, Glory Reborn. You know what? It is a birthing clinic, but they have teleconsult na. That's so good. Thank you, Kaayo, Hillary. Next. Oh, even Talisay District. South Gen and Minglanilia Mother and Child Birthing Home. Nasa Gen na siya FB page. Next. Okay, okay. Balik ta, ha? I'm pregnant. Unsaon man ako, Dok? Arundi, kay baon na dyan mo, Ani. Mura na nang siya spill. 
Mura kong naa sa kuan nga mag-spill. Wash your hands frequently. Put space between yourself and others. Do not touch your eyes and nose. Cough or sneeze into your bent elbow or a tissue. If you have these symptoms, please call beforehand and follow the medical advice. Next. So, mo niya kung take-home messages ninyo. Number one, prenatal checkups can be physical, visits, telehealth, or both. If you have any symptoms or history of travel or contact with suspected or confirmed cases, please report to us. During the physical visit or checkup, wear a mask. Mas maayu ha kung wala yung uh, exhalation vent. Kada ganing mga window-window, mas maayu wala na. Nga naman, ang yung mga gininahawaan, mugawa sa gapon dito. And observe physical distancing. Wash your hands, bring a call. Before teleconsult, prepare your questions. Kay you, we are only allowed 15 minutes, so kinahanglan, ready na tanan. Kung makapacheck up ka with your, kung makapacheck ta sa atong blood pressure, weight, and the movement, mas maayo, no? If wala ni, it's okay. Ay gabala ka. And prepare. When you prepare for labor, ask your healthcare provider of the protocols. Very important to get the swab test for RT-PCR. As for now, this one, I, I did not mention it, but this is really very important too. Nabi na sa karong panahon. Mental health is important. Connect with friends or support groups virtually. You eat healthy and you do some exercises. Narabito sa YouTube ang mga uh, pregnancy, uh, pre yoga for pregnancy, mga light zumba, right? And you call imong mga friends pag Zoom meeting mo para karon. Next. Oh, see? Bisa gikapoy na mi. We can still smile for you. Wala ang last like, go, go, go. So this is Dr. Gurley Veloso, and thank you for listening. Dakan salamat, Dr. Veloso, for your presentation. No, very engaging and very exciting. I think ang mga tao dalit na sabdan na donate changes in terms of the prenatal care and um, delivery processes that uh, we're used to know. So um, go, moving into the new normal, we do have to adjust. So before we start on to our next uh, presenter, we would like to announce what our um, challenge will be. So if, if there are any expecting moms or any moms out there that happen to have their pregnancy picks online, we will be giving 100 pesos load for the first five uh, mommies who are able to post their uh, tummy selfie challenge. So um, if you are currently pregnant or you already have a baby, you can go ahead, but you have pictures of your pregnancy, you can go ahead and put that in the Facebook comments. No, and so for the first five that are able to upload that and go ahead and tell us when is your expected delivery date or how old is your baby now? And we'll be reaching out to you, to the first five uh, users who, who will be our winners now and we'll be awarding 100 pesos load. So that's our, uh, that's our challenge for all of our mommy watchers who are there. Um, and now we'll be going to our second presenter, si Doc Isguera, who is a pediatrician and lactation consultant. She'll be talking about how we can uh, care for our newborns and our young children uh, amidst the COVID pandemic. So Doc, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Doc. So I'll turn over the webinar to you now. All right. Hi, good afternoon. I feel lonely. Wala naman ko'y madungog na sound. Ako ramang kaugalingon, ako madungog. <laughs> well, anyway, I am Dr. Marini Esguera and na-overdose na, na mo sa akong naong, I know. And um, you know my favorite topic already and that's breastfeeding. But before I became a lactation consultant and I am still a pediatrician. Uh, my topic is very broad. I'm gonna go very, very fast. But I just like to tell you nga, the Gantag event sa next month kay breastfeeding month man next month. We can go more in depth in your questions. And I have four more lectures after this. And you can post your questions there. And of course, you can always contact our trained breastfeeding peer counselors, ang Philippine Pediatric Society Central Visayas yun ang nag-train para matabangan mo sa inyong breastfeeding journey. Now, um, Dr. Lee has discussed with you unsay mahitabo when 
uh, you're preparing to give birth during this time of the pandemic, my job this afternoon is to uh, share with you what you're going to do with your baby. But your baby, manggod ka nang in a normal day, bisa wa pay COVID, di magod na maglaag-laag, di ba? Araman sa balay. Ang mga basic care lang mangyod sa itong baby, ang pinakadako nga problems nato is really feeding and monitoring for any problems. In terms of problems like uh, jaundice or mga infections, that can be, uh, that that's just the usual na wala tayo laing giilisan. The most big uh, uh, issue sa mga moms karon kay kung pwede ba sila mag, tapad sa ilang baby right after. Now, I want to talk about first what we do during uh, delivery in a katong wala pa'y panahon sa COVID. No? Igawa sa bata, paugun na siya sa doctor or sa midwife na nag-receive sa baby, trapuhan siya, aron daily siya bugnaw. Then, ibutang siya sa imudughan sa skin-to-skin -skin contact because that prevents baby from having hypoglycemia, having irregular heart rate, low low oxygen content and it really helps the breastfeeding which is considered um, one of the very important aspects in protecting your baby. Then after that, i-delay ang cord clamping sa imong baby. Uh, inigwala na nag-pulsate ang katong iyahang puso dan na pa siya putlon. O ighuman na o limpyo tanan sa imuha o si baby na ana sa imong dughan, idungan na mo o add to sa room. Magdungan na mo, di ba? Room in manta, diretso mo na ito ang recommended nga protocol. Now, during the time of COVID, there are some change, There may be some changes to this, but if you are COVID negative sa katong PCR test, the, the WHO recommends that we still do the essential newborn care still in this in this procedure. No, The four core steps remain as they are. Why? Because they are so important and so integral in, in keeping your baby safe. Okay, so I want to show this video. Alright, uh, I want to share with you also that on August 7, the Philippine Pediatric Society will be holding a forum starring ato ang mga um, other doctors uh, also still about breastfeeding. So Dr. Ranile Ang Guest, who is um, infectious disease uh, specialist and Dr. Natalie Hernayas, who, who is a neon neonatologist. So you can also post some of your questions there uh, or, or message them to me at Tita Doc Mom because my topic for this afternoon is very, very broad. I'm covering from birth to two years old. And I'm going to do my best to finish this in, in 15 minutes. Now, I don't want to uh, discuss anymore so much uh, in depth why we breastfeed our babies, but uh, generally, in terms of COVID, yun, mas makaprotect yun kung nag-breastfeed ka sa pneumonia, sa diarrhea, o katong mga ubo-ubo. Kaya mo mag na pinaka-common ng mga symptoms nga naa sa COVID. Kung masigit ka sakit ani mo hang baby, ma maningning ka pirmi, makuyuhan ka pirmi, ka nang muubos siya. O kung mahilanat siya, kaya naa siya pneumonia. Mga babies nga wala nagsusu sa ilang mama, increase ilang risk for for pneumonia in the first two years by 77%. And that's really huge. No? Mga babies who are up even until like they're three or four years old, if they are not breastfeeding, ang risk nila sa diarrhea is up to 60%. And uh, if na ay symptoms ani muhang baby, your doctor is going to consider your child a COVID suspect. So, dako atong pagganing ng anak. Now, the question is, the big question, can I breastfeed during this pandemic? Okay, the WHO recommends that you breastfeed to protect your infants and children from getting sick and for their healthy growth and development. Infants and children, no, until about, uh, about when your baby or child wants to wean. And usually three to four years old, ganahan na mo wean ang uban. But there are still some who are still breastfeeding at around four, five, six years old. And this really protects them, especially from diarrhea. Breastfeeding is particularly effective against infectious diseases because 
It strengthens the immune system by transferring antibodies from you, the mother. What happens is your body makes the antibodies. O ganing mga antibodies mo ato si imuhang breast, o mo transfer to your breast milk, o mainom sa imong baby ang antibodies. So the longer that you stay committed to breastfeeding and that your baby also wants to breastfeed pa, you can share your immune protection, your antibodies to your baby. So how great is that? No, there is no other way to confer or give your antibodies to your baby if there's mag blood transfusion or mag immunoglobulin, whatever. Okay, close contact and early exclusive breastfeeding helps the baby to thrive during the time of pandemic and when there is no pandemic. A woman with COVID-19 should be supported to breastfeed safely to hold her newborn skin to skin and share a room with her baby. Okay, unsa man ning share a room with her baby. Kung negative ba tanan ninyong test, maka maka um, room in ra mo as usual, maka two Tupad mo as usual, but if you are COVID positive or if you have symptoms, it is better that the baby is three feet or one meter away from you and that somebody else is taking care of the baby while you are not breastfeeding. Pero kung mag-breastfeed ka, si baby itupad ra sa imo ha. Now, what if I was exposed or I think I may have COVID, like I have a sore throat. This is during the time when you gave birth or even when your baby is already three months old, four months old, or five months old. Nga na kay silingan or na delivery guy nga na positive di ay. Then this is what you should do. Okay? If you are sick with COVID-19 or think you might have it, follow these steps when you are breastfeeding. Mga mamis, if you have any symptoms, you have to wear a medical mask. No, dili mada tung mask ngagi um, cloth mask ngagi sapaw sapaw. No, if you are breastfeeding and you have symptoms or think you may have been exposed to somebody positive for COVID nineteen, then you have to wear a medical mask. Okay, and washing your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Hand washing the proper way. I Google paliho gula na happy birthday sa hand washing. It cannot be overemphasized. No, hand washing is the bomb. It's really what can protect you good, the, ha the, the hand washing and the mask and the social distancing, okay? Routinely clean and disinfect any surfaces you touch. What does this mean? Kanang imong sanina, dilibitaw sa imong dughan and the part where um, the baby will be touching when you are breastfeeding your baby, that's still a surface that could have been contaminated with droplets from from your mouth, Victoria Nemo, or basing nilusot sa imong mask, you you have to clean the surface before you breastfeed your baby. No? Every time before and after you touch your baby, clean your hands by washing or um, alcohol. If a woman with COVID-19 is too unwell to breastfeed or feels too sick, she can be supported to safely provide her baby with breast milk in other ways by expressing her own milk, which we know can be done by many ways. And the most common way is by pumping, but it is not the best way. Okay, Pumping is not the best way to get milk from your breast. It is by hand expression because you can really feel where the ducts are I don't want to go into it. my favorite topic. And if you have stopped breastfeeding, you can breastfeed again. Ang tawag anak kay relactation. Okay? I'm going to touch on relactation because there are so many questions about it. And so many moms have come forward with the interest to relactate. And another one is through donor human milk. What's that? Human milk, gikan sa lain nga mam, mga gidonate sa imuhang baby. Now, the best is to pasteurize the donor human milk because it can, it, some early studies have shown that pasteurization can really um, makapatay good siya sa COVID sa ato ang, sa ato ang kung kung na ay COVID, no? ang, ang contaminated ang, ang breast milk because there are no studies saying or that have shown nga ang ato ang gatas makatransmit o breast o COVID. Okay? There are no studies saying nga ang ato ang gatas makatransmit og COVID. Pero ang kamot nga nagkupot, ang kamot nga naghand express, ang baba nga wa gitabunan mo adto sa ato ang di express nga milk, ang ang ato ang container sa breast milk which may be contaminated. Those are issues that need to be addressed. Okay na lang limpyo sad na siya kay dili day ang breast milk ang naihugaw ang sudanan di ay. Ang kamot sa gahatag di ay. Now, we want unta nga pasteurized ato ang milk, but unfortunately, in Cebu province, 
we do not have yet a pasteurizer that is working. So what moms are doing now are milk sharing, no? kind of donated human milk. It's called milk sharing. And I want you to be very, very careful about the sharing of the human milk because you do not know if the milk has been contaminated. The Department of Health uh, has this checklist that you know that we have in Milk Making Mommies. You just download that checklist and have your donor check to, to make sure ngang imuhang breast milk dili contaminated. Okay, so expressing milk, relaxation, and donor human milk if the mother is not feeling well enough to uh, breastfeed directly sa iyahang baby. And this donor human milk is can be given by cup. Mas nindot ang cup kesa sa bottle. No, I just want to make to take note of these physical distancing gihapon ang ato ang um, word of the day, words of the day, no? No mom and baby, kung ang mom is covid positive or na is symptoms, pila ka meters ang ang distance? 1 meter or 3 feet, okay? The the person who has who, who does not have symptoms and no exposure will be the one to take care of the baby but will give the baby to the mom kung panahon na mag breastfeed pero kinahanglan tanan surfaces o pati na ang surface of the breast before um, breastfeeding need to be cleaned no but that's tricky you know ang buhato na lang nimo is tabuna na lang nimo nimo ang breast area para kung mag breastfeed ka imo siyang hubuon na limpyo na na siya di ba Okay, di man sa siguro ka maglakaw-lakaw nga, nga gahubo ka, gahukas kung gakuan lang mo ka nang, na, ka nang wala, nagskin to skin si baby ni mo. Makaskin to skin ba si baby ni mo when, when you have symptoms of COVID? Yes, in, unang yakap ninyo makaskin to skin mo. Pero in, in, na amoy separation, medyo tricky na siya, lisod na siya. Na separation meaning one meter apart si baby ni mo. Always practice cough etiquette i'm not going to discuss it anymore as well as hand washing and nipple care which is kanang limpyuhan ba ang imong nipple og imong atngal before ka mag breastfeed dili gyud siya kinahanglan buhaton as long as infection control strategies and prevention strategies are observed which are katong cleaning of the areas or keeping contamination um, from happening in those breast areas now, I'm going to talk about relaxation now because so many people are saying na wala na sila gatas but ganahan sila mo breastfeed. And that is the process called relaxation. Kung number one tip ni mo para makarelactate ka is to have skin-to-skin -skin contact. Put the baby on your chest. Bisa unsang idara, ana. And the, the maternal instinct and the baby instincts will kick in and in time the baby will um, latch through you again. No? Another one is to always put, practice good position and latch when you are breastfeeding your baby. Because the number one reason nga mugamay atong gatas, kay dili maayo pagka position, pagka kupot ang baby, huwag disad maayo ang iyang paglatch sa breast. Okay? This video, I think, will be available for replay, so you can check this out. But this is also uploaded in the file section of the Milk Making Mommy's Breastfeeding Support Group. Now, there was a uh, question kanina. Um, somebody messaged me while Dr. Ver Gurley was talking and she said, Pwede ba daw gamitun ang nipple shield and sa to sa dropper ba to when you are relaxating? Yes, you can, but it, as soon as the baby is used to um, breastfeeding, you have to remove na the nipple shield because the shield isn't for long-term use. You can also feed the baby at the breast in these ways. What what are we doing here? We are giving milk. I'll see if I can annotate. Draw. Okay, we are giving milk to the baby using this tube. Nga inig kada tutoy ni baby mo 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 flora ang milk and goes to the baby. Abi ni baby nga ang milk gikan ni mother. Now this is called a French five feeding tube, and we connect. Uh, we insert it to the corner of the baby's mouth so that the baby can drink the milk supplement of choice that you are giving. If, uh, the best would be donor milk, but if you have none, then uh, cow's milk. And here, kung wala kay tube, you can drop the milk at your breast and it's going to flow and baby will be able to get it. And this is called trickle feeding or drip drop feeding. These are both very effective and I love them both. Okay? But if you're one of those lucky persons, lucky mothers, nga na kay Kaberks, BFF, 
nga pariyo ni balay or na akay relative who is also breastfeeding who is breastfeeding nga ikaw wala pwede mo mag-exchange para si baby niya si baby niya kanimo niya ang baby na no? si baby niya mototoy nimo si baby nimo mototoy niya aron maka stimulate og breast milk production sa imuha ang kaning baby nga gablak then ang katong katong imuhang baby maanad siya nga mo breastfeed sa katong naanay gatas daan maka stimulate na siya nga maka breastfeed ka balik and this technique is called uh, cross nursing very common in the Philippines actually wala ka ba mo ngan naman ko ba nga pasyente mo ingon ba nga dok nangumpra ko Oh, nga mo baby na unsa ma kaysa man nagpatutoy. Ay, gipatutoy sa akong igsuon. Mm, mao na na siya. No, it's very common in our, in our culture and we well accepted, but you just don't know nga mo din ayangan. Basag ko ka ba unsay binisaya ana niya. Okay, so next. Next slide. All right. Hala. Nawa akong na, na, na akong annotations clear. All right. This is cup feeding, no? If you are not able to feed your baby at the breast, you can feed your baby using a cup this way. Bisa newborn premature baby, pwede na ipatutoy og paimnon og milk that way. No, di na siya matukan when using the proper technique, but I know it takes practice. Practice lang good, no? Practice makes perfect. Now, you have to stimulate your breast to make breast milk again. How? You have to Hand express and massage your breast for 30 minutes for every 3 to 4 hours. A minimum of 6 times, but the best would be 8 times a day imong stimulate imong breast milk. Para mo ingon ang brain nga, Oh, kinasa pa dita mo himog breast milk? Oh, sorry ha, wako kabalu. Sige atong ibalik ug on ang atuang factory sa milk, which is the breast. Okay? Working moms, daghang work from home karon. Unsa ang pag breastfeed sa balay? Well, sayon. Either tabunan ni mo, di ni mo apilon sa video. <laughs> inig inig na mo meeting. Pero, ang, ang, ang frequency o method is still the same. I want to emphasize lang na kinahanglan, infection, prevention, and control strategies are always followed. Now, so, mana, kabaw na ka mo patutoy si mong baby. And I think I don't need to discuss na katong kana unsa ang pag-change og diaper mo yan nakabaw naman siguro mo ana or pota na inyong lula <laughs> now i want to talk about si baby di ba kinala na siya check up on ko na mga problema or anything just like you need to be checked by your by your ob as well now dr veloso has very nicely described the pre consult screening that happens when you are pregnant when you have a baby pre consult screening gihapon for you and your baby. So there's going to be two consult screenings before your checkup. No, and your checkup will always be by appointment. Very rare run nga pwede kang mag walk in appointment. No? So gamit kay run nga natay cellphone. Face masks and face shields for all persons above two years old. Well, just the face mask nga kinanglan all persons above two years old. But I also like to tell my patients pag face shield na lang yud mo, no? Kay para ma additional protection sa pila rin pag face shield. Nagha naman kay mga nindot sa nga face shield kayo nga dilibug at nga barato la. Now, PPE for healthcare workers. Your doctor is going to be wearing several uh, layers of protection during the consult if you are going to be seeing each other in person. So you have to shorten your appointments like Dr. Gurley said, 15 minutes. Same with PDA, sometimes even shorter because uh, in between the patients, daghang kang hubuon, daghang limpyuhan, no? mga alcohol sa tanan, ya gusto ka nga ma-air out ang room. There's going to be around a 15 to 20 minute interval between patients. No? And that really limits our capacity to see a, a certain number of patients per day. But if it is possible, mas maayo nga teleconsult sa, sa imuhang baby. However, if your baby is a newborn, there are so many things that we are, are monitoring for a baby who is newborn, na ay mga congenital, mga weight loss, mga infection, whatever. It will be up to your doctor to decide if the doctor will allow teleconsult if feeling niya wala ragi mahitabo or kung dako yang kulba kinanan magkita gid mo in person i'm going to discuss later on kanus amo next magkita okay 
So there's Viber, there's Facebook, but it's not very secure. And there are plenty of telehealth platforms now that are available for you to use. And these are better because they are more strict sa security or sa sharing of information. Now, another thing that you do with your baby that requires going out and exposure is sunlight exposure, di ba? Ibuwad sa init. O ibuwad sa init, ayaw hapit sa silingan. No? Kung nagsilingan mo doon, ayaw na palayo, palayo. Dili, pwede. Ha? Ibuwad mo sa init, pwede ka mo lang. No? Dili, kinahanglad o audience. Now, your first pedia visit will be three to five days after giving birth because we're going to be looking for jaundice, we're going to be looking for weight loss, number of pees and poops of your baby, ang mood sa imong baby, o temperament, and also we want to check on you on how you're doing because you're a new parent, no? you're a new mother, and there's also a new father, and it requires a lot of growth from a lot of people involved. The second visit will be at 14 days old because we want to make sure that the baby is not having late signs of jaundice, late signs of infection, and also we want to make sure that the baby is back to birth weight in the 14th day na ya, or mga two weeks old. Kay. Ang baby manggud mo lose weight na siya sa iya ang first week of life. Now, on the third visit ni mo, that will be at around one month old na yung baby, base na na may vaccination at, at that time. Or, kung sa health center ka pa vaccine, palihog tawag daan sa imong health center kay na ay mga uban health centers nga di kayo um, functional sa pagkakaroon. No, but I'm going to to just say that um, your pediatrician will be telling you what are the vaccines that you need. And I want to also say nga, dili ang baby lang kinahalan ng vaccine, kinahalan ang parent na sa vaccination. Kaya kung di masakit ang parent, probably di siya baka daog kagaw sa baby. Kaya ang parent may naglaaglaag, di ba? So, yeah. Now, I want to go now to how about older babies, no? Well, the older babies and children, they really just stay home and um, you want to take care of their mental health as well. I want to say that below two years old, it's better kung wala yung screen time. But I know it's hard. But we try. We try our best, di ba? Now, the Philippine Pediatric Society has released these guidelines um, on, on what you're supposed to be feeding your child. Kiba sa ikpuro sa dilata tong ipang kaon karon. Actually, there are so many indigenous food that we can give our children. Kaya so my concern sa mga to, to kuan, sleep, sleep regression. Wala magud ka ayo changes good sa bata, no? Kaya di magud na sila maglaag-laag. Ang kuan lang nga, you have to make sure nga mo handwash sila o mo na ana. No? Ang atong diet lang, kaya dili siya um, the same as before. Now, I want to specify that at six to seven months old, that's when you start giving your food, your complementary food to your baby. Uh, because there are nutrients and stuff baby needs that cannot be provided by breast milk alone. No? So it has to be breast milk with your uh, complementary um, the one in the picture now or nagi ni mash may uban ka be led weaning okay ra sad na baby led weaning but i don't uh, i caution against using baby led weaning a pure baby led weaning kung na ay feeding problem ang bata ang history like naglisog breastfeed for before okay um you can take a picture of this slide or you can go to the philippine pediatric society central visayas facebook page and download this a poster to give you an idea of how much and what food your baby should be eating at a certain time. Okay? I want to stress nga ang bata nga one year old na gakaon na in town og table food. Okay? Wala na siya gakaon og mashed nga food. Gakaon na na siya food pariho ni mo. Pero kanang ayun sa siguro na makato makatukan, di ba? Kanang mga foods that can choose uh, that can cause choking whether na siya 3 years old and above na sa imuhang baby but below 3 years old careful lang sa choking okay and no salt and sugar for babies below 1 year old because we want to be sure that the kidney is ready for that also um it's for katong wala na naka sa center wala na ka check up sa ilang baby the BOH requ uh, recommends nga maghatag tag iron supplementation sa atong bata around 6 months so contact your pediatrician for that and also vitamin A supplementation for babies at around 6 months or 9 months sa uban nga mag start okay um ang salt sad nato ayo dai 
Okay, and very important sa karon ang ato ang sunlight exposure without chimney bore. Because when you have sunlight exposure, ngayon nindot around 30 minutes a day, we will have very nice vitamin D levels. And there have been research saying that vitamin E, uh, D, D as in duckling, uh, is very important in preventing and treatment of COVID-19. Now here's another uh, poster from the Philippine Pediatric Society showing you unsay dapat kan on sa tawo uh, sa bata every day or every meal in fact pati sa adult sad no you should provide uh, this food each meal four of the seven food groups asa na to ang annotate draw okay Four of the seven. So, mo pili ka og four of seven. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, you have to choose four of them. Kinala na asya sa each meal. So, uh, I know a lot of us cannot or are not giving this to our children, but we should start. Because if your child has good nutrition, di na siya masakit. Maka-fight na siya sa mga kagaw-kagaw. Okay, also you. Also you as an adult, you have to be also eating healthy. Now, here is an example of uh, what you can do kung imuhang, imuhang rasyon kay tuna. Tuna nga katunggi ko ang ba? Dili tuna nga sosyal. Katutuna nga dilata. Pwede ka maghimog ingon ani para social sad looking no gitorta niya ang tuna. Pwede gani nga kana ang corned beef, pwede man ana to sabuan, pwede na himog spaghetti pero ang spaghetti na ay grated carrots no. There are many ways that we can uh, uh, improve the nutrient content of the delata that we have at home. But uso naman run ang mga plantita, plantito, raise your hands, na feel sad ko ana. Pwede na ka mag plant ug mga hang kong sa inyo hang neighborhood you can har uh, dili neighborhood akana uh, in your bakuran you, you can you can plant it and in around a month's time maka maka harvest na kuno kag kang kong tinuod pero if wala then you have to make an effort to eat up in a healthier manner because it will really give protection to you and your family Okay, um, I think I already mentioned the other things. I just want to say about deworming kay daghang wakato silang doctor. One year old, it deworm na. One year old, kapin-kapin. Or two years old, and that's around twice or once a year. Depending on, unsa ka hugawan ng now, joke, joke. But um, deworming is important also. Kaya mga bata rabaroon, nagduwa sa yuta kay wakagawas. Wakalaag sa mall. Okay, it's fine to play with soil. Just wash the hands of your baby afterwards. So that was my last slide. If I want to remind you nga, naadi ay tayo daghang mga lectures coming kay Breastfeeding Month na next month. And August 2 is big latch on. But um, the Department of Health will be also uh, uh, updating us with some COVID with some COVID uh updates and reminders during the big latch on they were they will have a short lecture at that time so that ends my lecture this is dr marini s gara i'm tita doc mom and the founder of milk making mommy's breastfeeding support group salamat sa pag paminaw sa uulitin bye bye thank you thank you so much dr iskara for your presentation no about that i it was very what do you call it detailed and thorough so um uh, you can also like the Tita Doc Mom Facebook page if you're interested in those topics. Kay daghan sila ko and resources dito. So, um, hello. So, can we bring back Dr. Veloso? Kay we'll be going into our question and answer portion with uh, our two speakers, Karon. So, actually, um, we collated the questions, and a lot of the questions were covered by Dr. Veloso and Dr. Esquera during the um, during their lecture, no. So we'll prioritize na lang the questions that were not answered. The first being, I think si Dr. Iskera can answer this. Can we relactate while pregnant? Is that possible, Doc? That is a very good question. And I have so much to say, but I'm going to keep it short. <laughs> uh, a lot of people will produce breast milk again at around six months, kapen ilang baby, even if they don't relactate the 
the body just naturally starts to be, make breast milk again. But if you're going to actively try to hand express your breast milk during pregnancy, well, in the other parts of the world that's accepted, pero kung naka sa Philippines, kasabaan ka anak ni Dr. Velasco. <laughs> because there is still no, di ba doc, wala pa may protocol about parent uh, ka ng Wapa siya mga anak niya mag hand express. No, sorry, sorry. You can breastfeed while you're pregnant as long as you do not have contractions or bleeding or any history of preterm labor. Mag ano man siya doc, mag actively relactate man siya. Wala na siya produce. Okay, so the question is, how do you actively re- relactate? What is the uh, procedure? Hand expression for 30 minutes every 8 hours round the clock. Okay. It's okay, okay. Ra? Yeah. Yay, that's good. You can do anything. As I told you, if you have contractions or you if you up. breastfeed, then you stop. Mm, Pwede ra? That's good. As a daily so, lang na nag, nag, nag-contract, then you stop na lang. If wala, mm. I, have, I have patients na ga-breastfeed until gani, mga 6, 7, mga okay, ibigkaso. Yes, okay. yes. Tinood, you know, like, mga anak na sila ugma na, or unya, patutoy <laughs> na pa. <laughs> <laughs> Nabi daw ko siya. Nabi daw ko siya. Nako yung patient doc, niingan siya nga. Doc, kanang ma-admit na ko, ako sa ning patutsyon ha. Okay, <laughs> okay that's good news. Okay, sige. So, uh, yes, the answer is yes, it is possible, no, provided that you don't have any um, uh, complications from that, no. And I, I would assume, no, you should also consult your doctor just to make sure that uh, it's okay for your situation. Sige, so our next question is, Hi, Doc Veloso. Is it possible for a pregnant mom who tests positive for COVID to pass the virus on to their baby? I'm assuming while in the, while in the womb. Right. That's a very good question. Now, there are limited data. Naana tayong mga data. No? Nga, they saw naana tayong mga effects on the babies for the COVID mom, kana na positive for COVID, like um, abortion, uh, intrauterine growth, and even fetal death. There have been reports already. But this is limited data. So wala pa tayo ng daku kay nga study saying na yun, Anna. So nanay na nakita nga mga, stud, nga mga, mga cases nga nahitabu. So siguro, Doc, the best, uh, you know, the best message for that is also to just do everything we can to prevent yeah. that highly vulnerable since wala ta kahibaw, no? Exactly. Oh, para dili ta may abot sa ingunan ng sitwasyon, let's observe katong atong giingon, nga magmas, physical distance, wash hands. Let's try nga dili ta makupit. Muna yung mm-hmm. importante yun para di ni may tabo. Sige. Now, I think the next question of your patient or your friend or who's ever uh, messaging is, how do you monitor? No, kung dahil na 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 mangkit siya COVID. Let let's say so a pregnant woman has COVID already. Kung sao na to pag monitor, katung fetal kick counts. No, check ni mo and then you talk to your doctor on kanusay niyong scheduling and tell your doctor report anything. No, so either mag as I said either teleconsult or either clinic visit and she may do some lab test or she may do some imaging to make sure that the baby's growing well, even if mm. not all Yeah, so I think, what do you call it, the constant communication with your doctor yes, is very really... Oh. Yes, yes. Okay, Sige, thank you, Doc Velo. So I think this next question, see, Doc Isquera could answer this. What age is it appropriate for my child to wear a face mask? Uh, because I know I read somewhere for Doc that uh, you know, you should not put a mask on an infant because it could interfere with breathing. So what age is it uh, okay now for the children to, to wear masks? Mask and shield, two and above. Two and above. So and below worry, that? Below that is, wala a good para dili kinahanglan. Okay, so dapat two years old and above, no? Okay. That, no that include about itong positive. Please, uh, the preg- patients with a COVID-19 history, if they can do a symptom diary, meaning per day, they can write down what they're feeling. Day two, if ni grabe, day three, nawala. May nana ba? A symptom diary and report it to the doctor. Ah, sige. So if you are a COVID positive patient and you are pregnant, no, you should monitor your own symptoms, write them down on a daily basis so that you can communicate with the doctor so that they can properly assess, no, 
uh, on how to to best assist you with that. Sige, thank you. Noted, Dr. Veloso. And to answer that question about the children and face mask, it is two years old and above. It is appropriate for them to wear a face mask and face shield. Sige, so our next question is um, for Dr. Esquera. For kids already with teeth or who are eating, they should already be visiting their dentist. How to defend against COVID-19 at the dentist's office where the mouth is being examined? Or can we go on as an Go uh, go there as needed basis only. That is a very good question, and I really haven't thought about that. But I know that the dentists have uh, the full gear. You no, know, they will have some extra appliances in their clinic that will make sure that the air there is filtered, and they will have the whole astronaut outfit thing. And I think that you really need to take off the mask when you're going to have a dental visit. <laughs> and, yeah. and at six months old, sometimes there are babies who already have um, teeth already. But I know that there are dentists who have online consults as well. And they are going yeah. to tell you if it's absolutely necessary for, for you to take your child to, your, uh, to the dentist's office. I want to take this opportunity to say that dental hygiene starts really early. As soon as your baby has teeth, you should be brushing your baby's teeth. With regards to toothpaste, daghang galalis, na yuban yes fluoride, na yuban low fluoride. Please discuss that with your doctor. I'm more on the fluoride, but there is a proper way. Ayohut da ang tube sa toothpaste. Kinanglan yung may rakaay yung imong ibutang, no? Di na siya mahorot sa usa ka tuig ang kanang imong tube sa toothpaste. Okay, uh, if you have concerns about maswalo ba sa baby. Now, the brushing is twice a, a day. Okay, then if you have uh, a, a child na batig yung contact your doctor first, your um, dentist first, and and ask if you really, really have to go to the dentist's office. I think for at this moment, um, a lot of the doctors are really going to transition with, uh, with remote consultations because the the risk for the patient and for the doctor and the staff are really great. Yes, noted. No, so uh, I think again, utilizing all of this telecommunication technology that we have, it's really going to be the new normal moving forward. And then uh, maybe this can be our last question uh, for Doc Velo. So is our I think this is referring to what you call it, sa delivery. Is our one allowed watcher required to? Uh, to also have a PCR test. Right. Kung wala siya risk, no? Kung wala siya symptoms, wala risk, katong travel, and then wala siya contact with um, somebody who's probable or suspect or confirmed, then dili ra jud kinahanglan. But ideally, if ikaw ang mubantay sa mom, ikay mubantay sa baby, mas maayo kay baw ka kung makatakod ka kanila. So, for me, mas maayo magpa-check sa siya kung siya ang magbantay sa mom, mga negative. So for those that uh, maybe it would be their partner or, or someone that will be interacting with the mom and baby on a frequent basis, mas maayo if makaswab sa sila so that they know. Um, and there's free na ba ya sa Soto yes. and uh, Bayan Mihan. Okay, sige, sige. So um, that will be all the time we have for questions. But I have one last question for both of you now. So both of you gave very detailed uh, presentations for... Um, for this session, no? and thank you so much for that. But if you could summarize one major takeaway that you would want to communicate to um, maybe expecting and new moms during COVID, what would that message be? Maybe we can start with uh, Doc Veloso. There's a lot of messages I want to read. Usa lang daw daw. Usa ra? Okay. Ah. Oh. Ito sa Marini kay I can't really take ano pa. Ah, sige, sige. Si Doc Iskara, ikaw sa... Unsa oh, wait, wait. No, I got it. I got it. Sorry. I, you got it. Okay. <laughs> Please, magpa-swab mo. Let's do the swabbing. Let's do the swab the swabbing for 7 to 14 days before manganak because it's really important para kay Baumi how to manage you. Na nakakadili ka ma, nakaka sa, sa regular room or nakaka sa specialized room. Arunda, dili sa ka magkatakot takot. So better to get a swab seven at least uh, less than fourteen days sa imuhang panganakay. That's it. 
Yes. Yeah, so I think that's important, Doc, because it's not only for your safety, the doctor's safety, but also the other people in uh, the other expecting moms that are going to deliver in the hospital. No, that's really for for everyone to be responsible and and take those precautions as needed. So, Sigi, thank you very much, Doc, for your message. And then, ikaw na, Doc Esquera, what would your takeaway message be for uh, for the watchers today? Jackie, nagbukal-bukal akong ba, ba. Everybody knows akong favorite topic, <laughs> breastfeeding. Pero ako, a message ni you kay, have faith in science. Okay? It has been proven nga mag-mask ta, mag-hand washing ta. We should do that pila rin pag-mask o pag-hand washing. No? Walay mag-tapok kay nagpalit og isda. Kada drive na ko, makita yung ko, mag-tapok sila sa sidewalk, magpalit og isda niya. Inaog na yun na ila ang mask. Kay Mustorya sila over the fish. Nang nang tagpila ni, o pila na kalaway ang nang, la, ano diha. So I want to stress, infection control and prevention is what we will get, what will get us through this pandemic. So that's my message. Yes. So being, I think we need to be very personally responsible for ourselves, no? If we wear a mask, dapat dili ipagkuan. Ipanaog ang mask. Ipanaog. Yeah, so... Thank you very much, Doc. I think it's simple, but I, I don't think we can stress it enough you know, to really practice those standard protocols that have been um, proven by science as uh, effective in terms of reducing the spread of the virus. So again, on behalf of Rafi, I would really like to say thank you so much to both of you for taking your time out of the day. Um, I've been just seeing a little bit of the comments here and there, but there's a lot of really positive comments from the viewers. I think the presentations were super helpful and um, direct in terms of providing information. So, daghan salamat ninyo. And I hope that you um, stay safe in your work as well. Thank you. Thank Sige. you. Sige. So, to wrap up, I hope that everyone watching was able to take some, something away from uh, the presentations of Dr. Veloso and Dr. Esquera. Um, I think to highlight you know, some of the things that I really, a common theme was the importance of uh, consulting your doctor you know, throughout this process and being willing to adapt to the new circumstances. Now, since we can't go to the doctor uh, in person all the time, we really need to rely on other methods such as telecommuting um, or, or contacting our doctor through some other method you know, so that we reserve those in-person visits for critical appointments. You know? So otherwise, we can just do teleconsultations and um, and calling ahead and informing when would we be coming in, no? Um, I also, since we have a lot of uh, moms and dads that are watching today, I also wanted to share with all of you in uh, an initiative of the Ramona Boites Foundation Incorporated, the Loris Oboites Children Fund, also known as DASIP. It's called Kitty Hub. It's a Facebook group that you can join on our page. And it is uh, designed to promote and foster the well-being of our children through new ways of learning. So we hope that through this TD group, we can improve the bond of parents with their children. And this is very important for us now since we are staying at home. A lot of us are staying at home. We're spending more time at home and with our kids during the pandemic. So this group is nice because uh, there's a lot of different e-learning tools. No, we want to increase the well-being. Um, state of our children through arts and play modules. These are the modules we have. They're targeted towards uh, children three to six years old, such as creative play session. We have FAQs that kids would have about COVID-19, mindful parenting tips, uh, how to count, seven domains with fun activities, photos, environmental stories for kids. It's just a lot of activities that you can do with your children. It's uh, we want to help guide you on, on creative ways to interact with your children, you know, so that we're not, um, we can make the most of our time together. You know? It's a blessing in disguise that we have more time to spend with our family. So let's take advantage of that. So if you're interested in joining that online community, you can go to the Rafi Facebook page, like us, and request, uh, click on the groups button and request to join. So again, we are targeting parents of young children ages three to six years old. Um, and if you actually, uh, if you always complete the modules, you can have the chance to earn different rewards. So please, if you're interested in joining that um, for, to, to improve your parenting skills or to improve you know, the time spent with your children, please consider joining that online community. It's a lot of fun and it's very active. 
Um, so we would also like to plug what Dr. Veloso mentioned in her presentation earlier um, and reiterate that Vicente Soto Medical Center is having a drive-through and walk-through testing for COVID. So you only need to register ahead of time and schedule it. Uh, so again, it's on an appointment basis. Uh, you need to, it's either walk through, meaning you go there, or you can do it in your car. Uh, we will be sharing this also on our Rafi Facebook page later so that you can have access to the link. So thank you very much. I would also like to thank the viewers and remind everyone that we will be having our fourth webinar next week. Uh, this time the topic will be about uh, taking care of our mental health and how we transition back into the new normal um, in the workplace. So we are definitely looking forward to you joining us again. Please like and follow us on Facebook so that you can register and learn more information about that. So in line with Rafi's vision of touching people, shaping the future, we hope that our session today has made you more aware of what we can do in terms of moving forward into the new normal. So thank you again so much for joining and remember to stay safe. Have a good weekend. Mura daw kong monster Na nagsulob sa akong mask Okay, fine, whatever Wala ko na bother Kay ang doctor na ang nag-ask If there's one thing you can do To protect the one you love Wear a mask na A mask.